Hey, happy Friday. Hope all is well. Hope you enjoyed your week as usual. And today, though, we're going to talk about winning is a condition. Winning is a condition. And it's not an event. You can't just win one time and be considered a winner in life. A winner over your life. It's a uh, it's a constant conditioning of your mind, your heart, your body, your soul, your spirit. And so to help us understand that, let's look at the definition of conditioning. Conditioning means to bring or influence something to its outcome or desired state for use. It's to bring or influence something to its outcome or desired state of use. That's conditioning. And so in order for us to win, we must condition ourselves. You know, it's kind of like, um, you know, I condition my thoughts, you know, to win. I set them to win. I think winning thoughts, I condition, and it's a constant. It's a condition. It's not a one-time thought. It's a co constant thinking that way. Um, I condition my hair, right? I put conditioning in my hair so that it would cooperate or, you know, style the way I want to style it. You know, it'll be softer. So I condition it. It's more flexible. It's more pliable. So winning in life or having victory in life, it's not an event. It's a conditioning. And so to help us to really drive this home, let's talk about athletes, right? We know that athletes, in order for them to win, excuse me, in order for them to win, they must go through conditioning. They must. Um, in order for them to be considered winners, right? You can you can win a game as an athlete, you can win a game, you can win an event, but that's one one time. In order for you to be considered a winner, you have to condition yourself or your activities and your thoughts and the way you do things to win consistently. You have to condition yourself throughout the season and throughout your life, as long as you are participating in that sport or that activity. So let's remember that. Um, you know, I want to talk to you today about the Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul, in 1 Corinthians verse 9, that's 24 to 20, says, says, Surely you know that many, many runners take part in a race, but only one of them wins the prize. Run then in such a way as to win the prize. Every athlete in training submits to strict discipline in order to be crowned with a wreath that will not last. But we do it for one that will last forever. That is why I run straight to the finish line. That is why I am like a boxer who does not waste his punches. I harden my body with blows and bring it under complete control and under submission to keep myself from being disqualified after having called others to the contest. All right? So we understand, Paul was saying, listen, I, in order for me to continue to be a winner as an apostle, as a Christian over this life, I must continue to self-discipline myself like an athlete. I must continue to bring my body, my mind, my spirit, my thoughts, my heart, and my emotions into submission, into self-control into self-discipline. And so that's what I want to talk to us about today. We have to understand that winning over life, it is a, it's, it's, it's a condition. It's not an event. We have to continue to bring our thoughts, right? Our emotions, our uh, activities into what? Submission. You know, when we think about people like LeBron James, we think about people like, um, I want to bring up Sidney Poitier because 
you know, they've been talking about this doc documentary or movie that's coming out in September and really highlighting the roles that he chose to uh, project to the world. Um, and he stayed constant in that. He, he had self-discipline. He conditioned himself. But what I also want you to understand is that what drives self-discipline is the love of something. It's the love of something. LeBron conditions himself for the love of the game. Gymnasts conditions themselves for the love of gymnastics. Simone Biles. If we're going to win in life, we must discipline ourselves in these areas. And it must be ongoing. It can't be a one-time event. Because Paul said, if you don't, then you will be disqualified. Paul said, if I, if I don't do these things, I run for the finish line. Because if I don't, I'm going to be disqualified. Even after I've brought other people into the winner's circle. Into the contest. He also talks about athletes are self-disciplining themselves to win a crown, or he called it a, well, this is a good good news translation. It calls it a wreath. But other translations, it calls it a crown. He said, listen, athletes in the world are self-disciplining themselves to win a perishable crown. Something that won't last. Like a trophy. Money. It's not going to last. He said, but I am doing it for a crown that will not perish. It's not going anywhere. It's eternal. Winning in life is when we focus on those things that are eternal, you all. Not just an event or an activity to let us win to a day, but it's how do I win in life to get me through this life and through eternity? For us as Christians, we understand that our mental capacity, our, our physical capacity, all these things we must condition in order to win. If you're not a Christian, I'm going to say this because I want to speak to everyone. In order for you to win, you're going to have to have some self-discipline and you're going to have to have the love of something. Paul did it for the love of the gospel, for the love of Christ. As Christians, we should be doing it for the love of Christ. Uh, so I just wanted to sum up all the areas that we've been talking about. The state of the mind, the state of the heart, the state of the soul, the state of the emotions. All of these would be considered a conditioning. A way for you to condition your life to be able to be a constant winner in life. I also want you to understand that we should always, always be disciplining ourselves, right? Or, or positioning or posturing ourselves to win in life or condition ourselves to win in life, whether we're winning or losing. Because that's another thing Paul was saying. You know, I'm winning in this thing as apostle. I'm winning this thing as a disciple. But if I don't continue to condition myself, to self-discipline myself, I will be disqualified as a winner. Whether you're winning or losing, I want you to get this in this area. Or whether you feel you're winning or losing. You must continue to condition yourself, to posture yourself, to have self-discipline. You, if you're winning, you must continue it to continue to win. If you're losing or you feel you're losing, you must begin to practice it so that you can become a winner. But I want you to know, it's God's desire that you win in life. It really is. That you win in your life. And I want you to understand that how athletes condition or self-discipline themselves, uh, it's based on the sport, gymnasts, may, I'm pretty sure don't do exactly like the football player. Or an actor does not discipline themselves the same way maybe a singer or a musician does. There's some, there's some foundational principles, but there are some things that are uniquely um, 
synonymous to their desired outcome and how they are going to be used. So I came by to tell you today, winning is not an event. You're not going to be able to just do things one time and think you're going to win in life. It is a constant conditioning and self-discipline. These folks that we hear about, like LeBron James, Simone Biles, Sidney Poitier, or Poitier, they didn't just win on an event. They had to condition themselves to continue to have self-discipline in their minds, their hearts, their emotions, and their bodies in order to win, to, to consi be considered as winners in life. And so did the Apostle Paul. Much love, Keenan.